Paremner, this is Patel Tutanjian coming to you from Aleppo, Syria. I'm really, really excited today to take a tour with Syria Scope Travel and really get to know the city, even though this is the city I grew up in. I'm sure there's a lot of things that I don't know. So I'm really excited to go on this tour with you. Let's go and explore. And we will be starting with the Aleppo Citadel. So let's start with the very important fact that Aleppo Castle is one of the oldest and the biggest in the entire world. If you, we will go through it and we will notice the architecture a little bit. It is a great example of medieval architecture with the Islamic style. And I will show you a couple of details here that the guide explained to us. Um, it's important to note that it was built in 3000 BC. Um, the reason why it's been a great defense system is because of the um, you will see the very narrow lines here that people used to um, defend with the arrows and also the top little balcony looking things is where people like this one over here is um, where they used to pour hot oil for defense as well. Um, we notice here that the bridge that goes all the way to the castle. It used to be a drawbridge. Um, however, the son of Saladin, when he came here, um, he decided to make it a stone bridge that goes all the way into the castle. So we'll talk about it a little bit more as we're going around. It is a very big castle. I remember coming here as a kid, but now it's very um, interesting to learn a little bit more details about the history. <laughs> It feels very majestic being in here. And I want to mention something about the um, entrance. So when we walk from the bridge here, the entrance is actually not in front of you, but it is on your right side. And this was made um, as a smart way of also defense, um, because then if invaders were trying to use the, um, the batters to enter the the kick down the door or open the door, they don't have enough space to go back and gather the strength to come back in. Um, so this is why it is made on towards this side. Another thing I wanna mention is on the entrance here, we have the stars which represent the time of Ayubin. And another interesting thing is on the door, we see a lot of um, the horseshoes. Only one of them is actually um, towards up, upwards. And this is, um, there's many um, explanations in the books for this one. Um, one of them being that there is only one God, so only one of them is pointing upward towards heaven. And the other one is during the Byzantine time, people used to um, believe in the um, horseshoes as like the, um, like brings you good luck. So they would come here and touch it and make a wish. And now we're actually entering this majestic um, castle. It was really cool being in here. As we're getting a little bit more light, um, I wanted to mention that the entire way in is also all like zigzaggy and it's all part of the defense mechanism as well. We now pass the last um, door entrance before entering the city of the castle where now we will see um, everything in there. Here at the entrance, before we continue going in, there is a room um, where it used to be during the Byzantine times, it used to be um, for keeping grains, storing grains. Um, however, during the Islamic times, they actually used this as a prison. And there is a person, Rino de Chatillot, who um, was responsible for the castle um, in Jordan, Karak. Um, he was actually imprisoned here for 10 years. And they used to call this the blood prison or um, Hapsaddam um, in Arabic because they used to put people here without any uh, food, water. They just put them in the dark and left them there. 
um, something interesting that I actually never knew, and I always use the words castle and citadel interchangeably, interchangeably, interchangeably. Um, and I never actually thought about looking up what is the difference is, so apparently a castle is a castle that is supposed to be just a castle from outside and the castle building, however, citadel is... However, sorry, I went out of breath. Um, however, a citadel is um, a castle that has a city inside, which is what this one is. And that's why um, as we we're growing up, I remember calling this Aleppo Citadel, but I just never knew why. We're now standing at the oldest spot um, within the citadel, which is the temple that used to be here. And over there you see um, the sacks of sands that were put in, in place um, during the recent war to protect um, the structure here. So there are two mosques within the citadel. Um, this one in front of me here um, used to be a church that was converted into a mosque. And the cracks that you see on the minaret here um, was caused by the recent earth earthquake. So these are also destroyed and the building that you see over there during the earthquake, which is very, very sad. So this building that I was mentioning that was destroyed during the earthquake used to be the museum of the citadel and the one behind me um, was the windmill. And here I will flip my camera. There is a theater. And some people say it's a Roman theater and some people mention that it's a Greek theater. However, as the guide was telling us, this is actually built in 1980s. And like it's a new theater that um, the city built to have some nice concerts and bring some um, liveliness to the castle or to the citadel. And I actually have been to a concert here as a kid. I will see if I can find any videos on YouTube and, and put it here. I'm not sure, but hopefully I can so you guys can see how it looked like. Um, during a concert. It's a really nice theater. So far we've been only like half an hour throughout the tour and I'm learning so much and I really really recommend um, Syria Scope Travel if you guys are planning to come to Syria and to Aleppo and they have tours around Syria as well. I will include all, all their information in the description below. Um, check them out. It's a very nice way of really getting to know the story behind the things that you're seeing and you're looking at. From here, where you can see the view of the city, you see um, it's very evident that um, the impact of the war on the city here. So here we have the hammams from the IUB times. And if you notice, um, they would make the domes and in the holes there are glasses. And these glasses were actually made um, to absorb the heat of the sun and bring it into the hammams. I meant to say absorb and contain. That's a keyword. And 
my fear of height kicks in when we're supposed to be going downstairs from here. But I got this. Um, it reads the royal hammam. We might be able to go inside. We'll see. Yeah, it's closed. Okay. We're now heading to the throne hall, which is what this one reads, Qayat al-Arish. And it is considered the most important um, hall or room in the citadel. So part of the, a very important part of the Mamluk decoration is the black and white stones that you are seeing here on the walls. And there's a really nice view here with the door facing the mirror. So one more fun fact for you before we go is that here on top of this little stones, or we have the little stones on top of the towers here, um, which was meant um, to deceive the enemies and uh, make them think that there's actually soldiers because it looks like the head of the soldiers. In fact, they were inside just resting. So I think it's a smart move. <laughs> we see here a bird just hanging. I don't know if it's clear in the video. And singing. So we're now in the um, the hall of the oh, oops. We're, we're now in the hall of the king, and in this um, hall, it's one of the newest rooms in the citadel, and um, there are ten windows. One of them is this big window behind the chair of the king, and the reason why they put this chair here is because during that time, it was um, if someone wanted to come in and deliver something to the king, um, they want it, it was a weakness if the king wasn't here, so someone else would sit on this chair, and because there's a big window behind them they wouldn't really see the face from the sunlight so they would think the king is sitting there because they would stand all the way over there and the chair is all the way over here let me try to show you so it's pretty far and this is the chair with the big window other than that the ceiling is also beautiful here we have the room of the servants and one more interesting fact before we leave the citadel is there is a little kind of gateway here 
in case the king needs to escape, he goes down the stairs and there are like secret tunnels that lead into different parts of the castle so he can shelter and run away from there. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the castle and I really, really hope that you guys can come here in person and experience this um, and make sure to check out with um, Syria Scope Travel. I will be continuing the day with them, so make sure you're also subscribed. We're at 7,500 and heading to 8,000, so please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and um, in the next episode we are going to the old souks and the Aleppo Soap Factory. So this is... I've never been to it, so I'm really, really excited. I will see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Just when you think the fun facts are over, um, remember the last room that I showed you where the king can escape? Um, so this is actually where that room will lead him and he will come out of here. Okay, now I really go. Bye.